My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to Mad Money. Welcome to Kramer America. Other people make friends. Hey, I'm just trying to make you a little money. My job is not just to entertain, but to educate and teach you. So call me at 1-800-743-CNBC or tweet me at Jim Kramer. When things get biblical, well, you got to get careful. That includes today's seemingly sedate session where the Dow ultimately gained 36 points, S&P advanced 0.10%, but NASDAQ dipped 0.02%. What do I mean by biblical? Right now, we're hearing a lot about David versus Goliath, how newer investors have taken on the hedge fund behemoths, armed with commission-free trading and more knowledge than ever. The people, united, will never be defeated. I recognize the appeal of that story. But this is not a morality play, people, and you're not sticking it to the man when you buy GameStop or AMC Entertainment. There's only one good reason to own stocks, and that, of course, is to make money. That's the whole ball game. It's what I try to help you do every night here. We are at a critical point in this market, a point where the cheapest stocks are often the best, and the most expensive stocks are often the worst. United Parcel, Abvi, Alphabet all sell at ridiculously low price to earnings multiples. Meanwhile, GameStop's in the 90s, even though the stock peaked in the 50s seven years ago when it had a much better business. <laughs> Sorry. But I want to address the retail revolution. That's what's important to me. I want to put it in context because sometimes revolutions fall apart. Sometimes you get a two day hunter, then things go back to normal. Other times, and maybe they take the radio station before the tanks roll in. We've already had one revolution the Robin Hood revolution, that used a terrific app and commission free trading to attract 17 million investors. <laughs> most of whom are new to the game. Even if they don't stick with Robinhood in particular, they love stocks and they're learning how to be better investors. And you know what? I think that's terrific. But now we're looking at a different kind of revolution with these theme, you know, these what theme memes that are, you know, I know I have a meme for myself, Leah. I know what a meme is, meme stocks. And I think that th that demands really a certain level of caution. So you know what I'm going to do tonight? I'm going to give you my rules for revolutionaries. That way you can decide if you really want to be one. First, rule one. If you're a stock market revolutionary, your goal is to augment your capital with stocks of companies that deserve to go up higher over time. Something I delved in really deeply this morning on my pretty unplugged, some say, monthly call for ActionAlertsPlus.com members. Rule two, your goal is not to demolish the czars, the bourgeoisie, the fat cats, or the Kulaks. Uh, what, what the heck does that get you? There's no slingshot like David and Goliath. There, there, there's a button you push to buy or sell stocks. You don't have a, a, a crush the hedge funds button, even if you coordinate with millions of your buddies on Reddit to buy at the same time. So put down the slingshot and pick up the annual reports, the quarterly reports, the conference call transcripts. Rule three, stocks do lots of crazy things, not because the market's rigged, but because the market's driven by humans, and humans are emotional creatures. If you know how to read those emotions, well, then you can find opportunities. Walmart gets hammered because America might be reopening. Opportunity. Chipotle gets slammed, even though its January numbers were extraordinary. Opportunity. Costco sinks because people are worried about the next number, even though it got a great long-term story. Oh, and by the way, I like Costco's monthly numbers very much tonight. Opportunity. Bye, bye, bye. Let the craziness work for you, not against you. Rule number four for revolutionaries. The government is not riding to the rescue. Janet Yellen, our new Treasury Secretary, met with a bunch of very important people to talk about what's happening in the markets today. But Yellen has bigger fish to fry. I mean, let's, let's see, there's like a pandemic, uh, mass unemployment. She's got to push through the stimulus package from Congress. Making new rules to smooth out the market, not a priority. Remember what I told you last night? The stock market is a caveat emptor institution. The government's not going to give you a warranty, people. These are not vacuum cleaners. You can't get your money back if you lost it, even when the action was insane. Sure, Yellen should look into last week's trading restrictions, of course. She should investigate whether commission-free means best price for you. I'd like to know that. Well, you know, we don't. But revolutions don't run on pennies. They run on knowledge. And Yellen can't make us smarter, even if she's Pretty darn smart herself. Rule number five, revolutions are 
dangerous. Which is why you need to protect yourself. You don't want to get purged. The best way to protect your portfolio, don't borrow money to buy stocks. It, just don't do it. Margin magnifies your losses, meaning you're going to hit yourself with the slingshot. I've been in the game for about 40 years now. And almost every single systemic problem, those are the ones we can't mess around with, in the market starts with too much debt. I know how hard this was. Hey, you know, when I was busy, I was in the hospital last week, when I was busy getting a Foley catheter, uh, Google that, stuck into me last week, I was begging for morphine. Not my finest moment. Margin is morphine. It's very hard to kick, and it messes with your judgment. Do you really want to be trading stocks when your judgment's impaired? Recipe for disaster. Rule six, revolutionaries can get carried away easily, especially when they're following a leader, leader they don't know. They feel like there's more to it than just buying and selling stocks. They want to be encouraged by others who've done the homework. Trust me, these people don't care about you. They just need you to keep the balls in the air so they can make more money. So I need you to keep a sound head. Today, you should be pondering if Amazon is worth more or less with Jeff Bezos as executive chairman rather than CEO. It, is this like when Tim Cook took over at Apple, something that, so, that really scared people, even though it turned out to be one of the greatest buying opportunities of all time? I think so. You should have been thinking about how Alphabet has transformed itself into a company where the focus is on YouTube profits and Google Cloud growth. These big tech outfits give you a fire hose of information when they report, and that information does make you a better investor. Remember, that's our goal. Finally, rule number seven. Remember that there's more to this revolution than the nihilists who say it's all fake or the keyboard class warriors who want to storm the winter fat cat hedge fund palace. I'm talking about the part of the revolution that may have brought you here. The original goal, trying to make money in the stock market. You do that by finding companies that are in good shape and poised to do even better in the future. And look, you want a cause beyond making money? Amazon and Microsoft are determined to save the environment. Lowe's and Constellation Brands and so many others are committed to racial equality. How about companies that educate their employees? That's Starbucks or Raytheon. Maybe you want a company that just pays its people well and treats them with respect. I've studied this. It's Costco. If you believe business can make the world a better place, you can absolutely manage your money in a way that rewards the best corporate citizens. We never used to take this stuff seriously. I came from the age where you put your morality to the side when picking stocks, unless it was something really egregious. And if you wanted to make a difference, well, you just donated the profits to charity. These days, though, companies have to embrace these environmental, social, and corporate governance causes if they're going to recruit the talent that they need to compete against the likes of a Salesforce or an Alphabet or an Apple. You want to make a difference with your stock picking? Well, that's how you do it. The bottom line, if you're part of this new cadre of investors, I am begging you to follow my seven new rules. Who knows? Maybe you'll end up hated by your fellow revolutionized from revolutionaries for making so much money. Maybe that they will be angry at you because you did well. You know what I call that? A very high quality problem. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.